Hello there and welcome to the video. More tiebreak action from the World Cup. We are in the first round. And this matchup was an interesting one. A very experienced uh, Romanian Grandmaster, Viorel Yordayescu, against a young uh, Russian a prodigy, Volodar Murshin. Uh, now Murshin is 14 years old. It says there that he's an IM, but I believe he might be a GM. Uh, but the title hasn't been confirmed. In any case, I've seen him around uh, in some youth tournaments and the last time I went to the European Youth Championship he was playing, I think, the under-18 when he was 13, 14 years old. So very ambitious, I mean he could have played the under-14 and won it probably, but he played the under-18 to play stronger opponents. So I, th I think this guy is someone to look out for and here he is in the tiebreak against uh, Viral Yurtaescu. They have played five games and they have all ended in a draw. Let's see how this one played out. So, uh, VRL with, with white, he opened with e4, and we have the Karo Khan. Seems like, seems like, like young uh, Russian players might be a little bit influenced by, by Karpov. I'm thinking of Artemiev and Mosin. Guys that want to play positional, they seem to like the Karo Khan a bit. I don't know if he plays the Karo Khan every time, but just an observation we have the advanced variation bishop to f5 knight f3 e6 the so-called uh, short variation named after knight or short originally he played it to kind of avoid theory but now it's uh it's very topical so short has to find something else i guess so the knight comes out 97 this is a typical deployment for black here in, in, in this line of the karakan uh, a4 Black ops for a5 here, it does not want to allow white to grab the space, but white will. Knight g6, bishop to d3, bishop to e7, so a little bit clogged up here on the king side, but black manages to, to castle. g3, indicating that white wants to grab some space, play h4, h5. Black ops for counter play on the uh, queen side with c5. But now h4 and we see that this knight is lacking squares a little bit uh motion went for c4 trying to maintain this bishop i guess so after h5 at least we maintain this bishop knight b8 he wants to redraw this knight but then again maybe not the pro uh, maybe the prospects aren't that great on c6 but maybe a slight improvement but white should be for choice he has the space and he can start building up on the king side which he will Played h5 and knight c to e3. So black probably needs to find counterplay either by breaking on the queen side with b5 or trying to fight back on the king side. After f4, he elects to fight back. f4, f6. So the question is if white maybe should have played something like bishop g4 to keep this square available for a piece. Maybe you want to put a knight there and, and make it more difficult for black to break with f6 and, and keep, keep an eye on this. Kind of built up before you you start pushing but uh he went with f4 immediately we have f6 your task with turk and bishop takes f6 i think white is still for choice i mean pressure here but black seems to be defending and now this knight comes into the game that, that's one benefit of playing f6 this knight that was previously well just boxed in the corner it's now entering the game white tries to break on the queen side here as well b3 but there's never going to be big pressure on the b-file with us controlling the uh, b1 square. Knight to e7, bishop a3, and bishop b4. So it seems like the black pieces are coming to life a little bit here. He avoids the queen trade and puts pressure on the, on the c-pawn with a nice maneuver here. Rook to a6, he wants to put the rook maybe on c6 to put pressure on the pawn. Rook e1, knight to d6, the knights are coming to life. One of them can jump to... The f5 square now, queen back to e2, knight to f5, king gets 2 and this was under attack, and now rook c6. So black seems to have fixed his position considerably here, and now he unpins the knight, so it looks like every move kind of has a purpose, you know, he's been fixing his pieces, the knight that was in the corner is now in the game, he's unpinned the knight here, this rook on a8 has now joined the c-file, the queen is behind the rook, and the bishop is now much better placed here. So nice positional play by Volodymyr Mursin. 
school Darmorsen and uh, Jordan Esku elects to take on t6 now we have a trade persuades 3 b5 so black goes for it here on the queen side trying to create a pass pawn here on the a file knight d4 and now it takes and the other knight to e3 so white doesn't seem to want to take on f6 he would eliminate the bishop pair but again this bishop is very much dominated by the pawn so i guess it's not a trade that white wants to make happen queen d8 knight to e5 he'd rather trade on, on this square rook b6 rook a1 and now queen b8 and now we have gone for the open b file with running rook b2 to win the queen so rook e2 was played to block that but now rook b1 trying to penetrate on the b file and the queen comes into b3 rook a2 volodar now takes on e5 and brings the knight to b5 he might lose this pawn but he's going to get this one in turn also there's this strong move d4 where he can't take because of the knight hanging behind it so seems like he's putting on the squeeze here rook c4 we have a trade and now volodar takes on c3 he's up a pawn white gets the pawn back but it turns out that white's king is a little bit more, more vulnerable and also we have to take care of this queen b2 check king h3 still can't take on e3 because this is hanging but queen b4 now and i guess if we go for the end game we have an outside pass pawn so takes takes the knight has to move and the bishop would come to b3 and the, and the pawn would be quite fast here on the b file so white elects to keep the queen on and now the knight comes in queen d2 uh, again we can't take because of queen d8 so queen to b1 and here it's hard to find the move and white didn't find one probably in, in a little bit of uh, pickle on time we see it. well actually you can see it but i see that uh, white has about 23 seconds left so this was definitely in time trouble uh, this was a 10-10 game and queen takes d4 actually just hangs mate and volatile motion did not miss it he took his chance queen h1 king g4 bishop f3 and then queen takes h5 mate on the board and motion uh well he let out a big sigh of relief he had beaten his formidable opponent and in fact, Jordaescu had played in seven Olympiads before uh, Volodar Mursin was even born. So a little bit of uh, changing of the guard here. And Volodar Mursin, somebody to definitely uh, look out for in the future. Maybe even early on in this event. We'll see uh, what it does in the second round. But a strong win from him. And uh, this is somebody I think you should try to uh, look out for in the, in the near future. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.